Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitamount.com, bitamountlive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Monday, December 6, 2021. And as I mentioned last week, we're going to take a look and see how things went over in uh, Hong Kong for the uh, some of the Asia sales that took place in November over there. Uh, to say they were in early December, uh, to say they were uh, successful would be an understatement. Absolutely uh, wild prices. And uh, Christy did an announcement about it. Highest grossing sales sales they've ever had in Hong Kong for all their sales. Every every file they do, uh, contemporary works of art, jewelry, all kinds of things, and of course, Chinese and Asian works of art. The gross of the sales combined were $495 million U.S. or $3.8 billion Hong Kong. Uh, the combined sell-through rate was 90% and 92% by value which means the prices were extremely strong. Hammer prices averaged 123% of the low estimate. 35 auction records were set in several categories. And uh, overall, it was just a wildly uh, successful uh, thing. So no matter what's going on in the world, as far as anxiety about China and trade and all this other stuff, it sure doesn't seem to be having an impact, any impact at all on the collecting interest in Asia for antiques in, in art in general, uh, even beyond Chinese works of art. You know, there's a John Michael Basquat painting sold for millions and um, all kinds of things are happening over there. So it's very exciting what went on. But in this, in this video, we're gonna focus on what happened with the Asian works of art through three sales. All of them did great, and some pieces did beyond great. It was uh, very, very exciting uh, to see. Um, uh, and uh, the catalogs, as we talk about, are on the website if you want to go back and review them and look at them in the future. There was the, the Song de Tang collection of uh, Sung ceramics, 100% sold. Uh, all of it did very well. Most of the pieces sold for above their high estimates. And then there was the Cheng Wai Hua collection of archaic jades, um, some spectacular prices here, uh, a lot of strength in this market. Uh, the estimates, uh, for the most part, were fairly meaningless on the important pieces, uh, it, uh, went up by multiples. And uh, Chinese works of art, important Chinese works of art, did very, very well um, also across the board. Uh, it, it was really impressive. Uh, the, 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 number, the numbers were magnificent. And uh, let's take a look here. We're going to hop over to some of the auction results. This is the, uh, the Sung ceramic sale that took place. Uh, some extremely um, superb uh, examples in here that went well over what anybody had anticipated for them. And of course, you know, when, when intact collections or large sections of old, highly regarded intact collections turn up, um, you know, they, they become the talk of the town. It's pretty obvious none of this stuff has been offered around the market before the auction because every single piece sold and, and every piece sold pretty much above the high estimate or at the high estimate across the board. And the finest, finest pieces went well over. Uh, so it was really, really great stuff. One of the pieces was, uh, for example, this, this really fine Qingbai lotus bowl. Uh, unbelievably fine color, extremely fine potting, estimated at 240 to 300,000 Hong Kong which is in the, uh, uh, in the in roughly the 20 to 30, 35 uh, or so thousand dollar range and um, ended up going well through that up to 875,000 Hong Kong. But if you if you come over and take a look at the piece and magnify it, you'll see how well it's potted. Very, very fine, thin rim, good uh, light blue uh, glazing, filling in all of the incised areas all the way around. And this very nice, uh, cooling effect in the bottom that uh, just uh, really centers the piece when you look at it. But notice how loosely and how well, how well, how well drawn the decoration is in this, but, but uh, very fluid, very loose, very even and uh, nicely done, perfectly spaced. And it appeared to be in excellent condition. And it ended up selling for 875,000 Hong Kong or roughly $100,000, which is a significant price for one of these dishes, one of these bowls, very, very good. And then on to this that even did a lot better was this extremely rare uh, Qing Bai Meiping vase and cover. Now, this is not an enormous vase. It's eight inches tall. Um, but when you look at it and pull it in nice and close, um, it, the uh, glaze for right off the bat, obviously, is superbly even. 
just absolutely as even can be. A lot of the, these Ching Bai type glazes, these very fine glazes, you expect to see these on, on, on the redos that were done during the 18th century. Um, you see them on, on later pieces, but to find something done in the Song with, with such a fine, fine, even glaze from top to bottom and having its cover. The covers on these vases are, you know, you know out of every 90 of these May Pings you see, only one or two of them would have its cover. And to have an extremely fine example with its cover is uh, quite a catch. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, were impacted by that. It was estimated at five to 700,000 Hong Kong, or r roughly, uh, uh, you know, 60 to uh, $80,000, and uh, ended up selling for um, um, over half a million, which is a very strong price for a piece we can buy. But again, um, an old collection, well regarded not been on the market in a while, and um, um, you're off to the races. And then over here on the Celadon, a nice Celadon, this Yuxiao floral form bowl was uh, offered up with a 240 to 300,000 Hong Kong estimate, which is 30 or $40,000. Went way beyond that, way, way, way beyond that to um, over, over to about $250,000. And, and the reason is, again, the glaze is superbly well applied, very, very even. And the shaping of this bowl is just amazing. It's just amazing. This is a really incredible piece of early pottery with the with the with these the shaped with this very exaggerated shaped rim running all the way down it, and, and nicely proportioned all the way in. This very very fine crackle glaze with no imperfections in it. That's all. This all adds up to you know a rare piece because uh, usual pieces always have little typically have little problems here and there. This piece was absolutely perfect. And again, a five inch bowl. This is not a big bowl. This isn't ten inches or something. It's five five inches in diameter, sold for 2.1 million Hong Kong, or um, uh, roughly $250,000. And then moseying along uh, further down, this is toward the end of the sale, up came this, this very, very, very rare uh, molded ding peony bowl with foliate rim uh, with a copper rim on it. And uh, if you take this and blow it up, you'll see, see you can get a pretty good sense of why it brought so much money. Um, this was absolutely perfectly done. These are molded um, with, with hand carved, very finely molded, and then they push the paste into them and, and get it nice and even. And this one has this has its original copper rim with a slight foliate decoration pinching in here, here, and here. But look at the look at the decoration on it, the depth of the decoration, the pooling of the glaze, and this absolutely perfect creamy white uh, uh, glaze over all of this just uh, make it a, a, a heck of a rare thing. Um, it was estimated at seven to nine hundred thousand Hong Kong, which is not inconsequential. Um, it's you know it's a significant. It's, it was estimated so that would be in the uh, 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 eighty to hundred thousand dollar range, roughly sixty, seventy, eighty to a hundred thousand. Ended up going way over that to about a quarter million. All right, so uh, there you are. And this bowl was uh, seven and a quarter inch, seven and a half inches in diameter. And uh, all of these pieces had been exhibited um, at the University of Hong Kong in a, an exhibit called the, um, the, the Multiplicity of Simplicity, Monochrome Wares from the Song to Yuan Dynasty. And uh, uh, a number of the pieces in this sale were included in that, if not all of them, I think at one point. All right, and then you get over here to the uh, Chen Hua, Wei Hua collection of archaic jades. Again, um, this is uh, part three. Uh, from what I could see, it was, I think, 100% sold, or maybe one lot didn't sell. I think it's 100% sold, from what I remember. Uh, going through it really quickly here, so I don't make a mistake. But I believe it was 100% sold. Uh, yeah, 100% sold. There you go. And uh, there were some great pieces in here. And these jades... Um, are, 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 there's a very, very, very strong market for them at this point for the earlier finest examples. Uh, for this one, ex for example, was estimated at 2.8 to 4 million Hong Kong, and uh, which is which is you know uh, upwards of half a million dollars to the high estimate. Went way through that and ended up selling for 15 million 250 thousand Hong Kong, or just shy of two million dollars uh, U.S. But 
uh, spectacular jade. And this is not big. This is only a couple inches long. But uh, they did an absolutely amazing job um, uh, with the uh, images here. And if you're interested in early archaic jades, you really need to come and get a copy of this picture for your computer uh, because it shows the, the absolutely superb detail of all, of all of the work, from the major cuts to the minor ones to all the little incised decorations that fall down over the body, how the ru ru little ruddy heads are done in the scrolling devices, the color of the stone, the gradations of color in the stone, and, uh, and some residual red pigment still on the piece, which makes it quite unusual. Often there's very little pigment left on any of this, and this still has some of its red pigment because these were, these were highlighted with, with colors uh, uh, to make them more interesting in the day. And uh, this one just uh, got everybody's attention and sold for, uh, as you can see, close to $2 million. And, uh, and then next, the next piece up was this, estimated at 3.8 to 5 million Hong Kong, ended up selling for 6,850,000 Hong Kong. Again, over its high estimate at about $800,000. And this is, these are small pennants. This is three and seven inch, it's three and seven eighths inches long. But again, uh, upon examination, when you blow the, the jade up, you really can get into the carving. And you can see traces of old pigment in, in it, and you can see how well carved it was and how it was worked, um, uh, you know, back, back in the period when this was created. And the workmanship on this is great. The proportions, the scale, all of it. The balance, how it's balanced so well from right to left. There's no mistakes. Uh, just absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. And again, it's from the Warring States period, maybe to the early Western Han, uh, when, they, when they made all these great jades. And uh, here's another one. This is a mid warring states uh, example. It's a dragon form pendant uh, estimated at 100 to 150,000 Hong Kong, which is fairly, you know, fairly modest, 15 to 20,000. Ended up selling for about $80,000. And again, very finely done. And, and these dragon pendants are a little bit more common in this form than the others we just saw, but, uh, but beautifully done, beautifully highlighted, uh, nice glossy finish in the polish, still on the, on the piece, and uh, meticulously carved. And as I said, you can really pull them in and get a very, very clear look at the surface of the stone because they make so many copies of these these days. It's unbelievable. And you want to be able to see the surface and what it should really look like and all the little details of how the eyes are done, how the jaw is done and outlined and all this outlining around the, around the head and the horn on the back. And then, of course, the, uh, 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 the uh, added uh, decoration, these, these curlicue devices running down through it. Uh, but beautifully, just beautiful, beautiful quality and well balanced all the way. And uh, $687,000. And then lastly, this was one of my favorite things in the sale. It, didn't, it wasn't the most expensive, but I thought it was one of the most unusual. There's this dragon form pendant, Warring States period, sixty dollars to $80,000 estimates, which I thought seemed low when I first saw this a few weeks ago. I thought, gee, that, that's a very rare looking thing. Well, apparently a lot of people thought it was rare and it ended up selling for about $80,000. But uh, uh, the, the quality of this and, and the difficulty of carving this um, uh, is just amazing, is just, is, is just unimaginable. Um, it, it may be this is a slight loss or something here that they lowered the estimate for some reason. I don't know. But the way the head of the dragon is done, it's fully articulated, absolutely fascinating. The eyes are beautifully, beautifully carved all the way down. And then, of course, they did the body with this series of sort of spiraling cuts running all the way down to its tail. Almost looks like a giant inchworm. And uh, it ended up doing very well in the end. Okay. And then moving along over to the, the big, one of the big sales in here was, was the fine Chinese or important Chinese works of art sale. And there were some real gems in here, especially uh, 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 in, for items from the Qing dynasty really stuck out. Um, Imperial Qing wares uh, were the stars clearly in this sale. Um, and we're going to get into it. And some of the pieces we talked, I talked about in the preview, and uh, we'll get over to those in just a second. But we're going to start with this, a pair of Zhu, um, these archaistic wine vessels. Uh, uh, absolutely beautiful, estimated at five to 700,000 Hong Kong, uh, made short work of that and sold for triple their high estimates, uh, coming in at around um, about a quarter of a million dollars, somewhere in that range, rather than in the, in the, uh, in the you know, 70, 80,000 dollar range. These are exceedingly rare, and these were beautifully done, and um, 
just great detail all the way down. Highly refined workmanship. Uh, the potting on these are incredible and uh, uh, just absolutely perfect. We're probably made, um, uh, obviously made at the Imperial Kilns and uh, probably done around 1750 or 60. Uh, but from what I can see, they look like they were done during that period. Um, and they came from the collection of Robert Malcolm, CBE, sold at Sotheby's uh, about 21 years ago. And here they are coming back uh, and, and did just fine 21, 21, 22 years later. And then moseying along over to this, a really beautiful, small uh, uh, pair of Famille Rose Peach and Bat Bottle Vases, Chan Chu Pings, with Dao Guan seal marks uh, end of the period. Six car uh, uh, I forget how, these are like nine inches, 11 inches tall. Because as you know, most of these, this, this pot, we typically think of them as being in the 16 to 18 inch area. So they were, they were, they were, but they were fairly strongly estimated for Dao Guan. They were estimated at 500 to 800,000 Hong Kong. Or roughly eighty to a hundred thousand dollars, somewhere in there, sixty to eighty, sixty to to a hundred thousand, and they went way through that and uh, ended up selling for. Uh, uh, let's see here, divide that by about a quarter, uh, a little about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Went well above their estimates for a pair of Daoguan vases, but they're beautifully done, and they they're a beautiful pair. And pairs of these, of course, are, are quite rare and unusual. But the shading. Um, of the peak, the pink, for example, was particularly well done, very much done in the, in, in, in the skill and, and quality of Qin Lung examples. And uh, the bats were very elegantly drawn. The tree branches were perfectly done. The potting was nice and even. And uh, they looked to be, of course, in wonderful, wonderful shape. The gilding around the rims was still fully intact, which is quite unusual because often it's worn. All right, and then the lappet, the standard sort of lappet base, but slightly styled, styled a little bit differently than you see on most. A little more elegant looking. And uh, uh, these were uh, uh, part of this, part of this was the, I forget who the collection was. Did they even say? Um, no, okay, I thought it was part of the other guy, the guy we just mentioned's collection. It's another collection. Anyway, they, they, these did uh, extremely well, about $230,000. And then over here to this, uh, these came in at about eight hundred thousand dollars. Were estimated at two and a half to three and a half million Hong Kong, and it's a pair of Tibetan style altar vases uh, called Benba, Pang, Benba Pings, and uh, fairly rare. And, and, and here you have a pair of them, which was very unusual, uh, and did really, really well, uh, uh, bringing in about eight hundred thousand dollars for them, roughly seven hundred seven hundred something thousand. Um, uh, more than uh, uh, just about just about doubling their high estimate, and again, these are not enormous. These are only five inches tall. They don't read like they're that tall. They read visually. If you look at this and you, you think of them, you think, "Oh, these are probably ten or fifteen inches tall." These were very very small. These are very small, five inches tall, but they're Chin Lung Mark and Period, obviously done at the Imperial Kilns, and uh, superbly uh, colored all the way through. And you really should pull them up. And they have the, this this. Uh, super refined um, outlining that went on here, extremely fine. You can barely see it and then beautifully shaded in all the way down. This was, this was extremely refined Famille Rose work. And uh, you notice it goes from a nice deep red and then fades gently as the lotus petals uh, flow into the center and then it turns green and blue. Just beautiful, beautiful use of color. And uh, the neck here with these uh, double row of lappets, which is quite unusual. And then uh, and these beautiful tops, uh, again, repeating the decoration that you see on the main part of the body. And uh, just great all the way around. All right, and this is the kind of stuff that happened uh, lot after lot. Here is a, a, a really, really fine carved celadon vase, chi, with, uh, Qilong vase with, with Qilongs on it. Uh, Qilong period. Uh, and you pull this in and you can get a good sense of the uh, decoration. Very reminiscent of, of wares that they did during the Kangxi period. You'll, you remember they did celadons and, and vases with this sort of general layout um, here. And here it is done the Qin Lung period carved into the vase. Estimated 3.5 to 4.5 million Hong Kong, which is, which is a significant amount of money. Um, you're, you're looking at about, you know, uh, around, around five, five hundred thousand dollar half, half, you know, high estimate. And uh, these are, this was nine inches tall, well, went way over that and it ended up selling for eighteen point eight million, which is which is over two million dollars, two and a quarter million, two hundred two million one hundred thousand, somewhere around there. 
uh, so so way above it. So the, 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 the hunger for million dollar items and up is still very, very strong when the right things come into the market and things like this definitely get the attention. And then back over to this, this was that uh, tray from the Chow collection I had mentioned in the preview because I thought it was just spectacular, uh, extremely rare, obviously. And it was estimated at three to 500,000 Hong Kong. So uh, they had a high estimate of roughly a uh, little over $600,000. And in the end, it did very, very well. It sold for 16 million Hong Kong, or um, roughly $2 million. But uh, a very, very rare form, beautiful color, evenly done, perfectly done, all the way around, highly detailed, very, very refined, and um, off to the races, Yong Chen period. And, and, a, and a, uh, a Yong Chen seal mark on the base. There it is. All right. Uh, and then what's the next? It just goes like this forever. It's really amazing. And then these, these, this was this was a bit of a surprise. A really, really rare pair of, of uh, celadon glaze ovoid vases with chillong appliques around the top of these little baby dragons, like, you know, the chillongs. Um, again, imperial kiln work. And these were tiny. These were uh, not great big jars, 10 inch jars, and uh, ended up selling for 26 million Hong Kong which is uh, 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 roughly three and a half million dollars US with a 700, uh, seven to nine million Hong Kong estimate. So they were estimated with a high estimate of close to a million dollars. And they of course went way over that. They went way over that by, um, by more than uh, two and a half times. And uh, the quality of them was great. And again, extremely even celadon glaze, perfectly glazed all the way down, beautifully potted, beautifully matched. Um, uh, all the way through the way the positioning of the, the chillong, the way he's draped, the way the glaze pulls off of him, the high points here and here and here. You can see where they applied the glaze and just pulled back just a little to make to give him some uh, some uh, definition. And uh, there you go, 26 million Hong Kong dollars, and uh, that's a lot. And then they had this. This was estimated at 2.5 to 3 million Hong Kong, a really fine guan type uh, pentalobe bottle vase. Yong Chen, six character mark, end of the period, nine inches tall, ended up selling for more than double its high estimate, hitting uh, 6.8 million Hong Kong, or around $800,000 roughly. Uh, but it is a nice blow up of it. And again, you have this very, very superb. Uh, glaze that's been applied to it perfectly even and this nice bold crackle running up through certain sections and then the other areas being left open and then this beautiful potting tapering off up to the top of its the way it slopes in um, here on the shoulder for example and then it goes up to its mouth beautifully beautifully done and then the, they have this uh, pinched effect coming down that terminates neatly above the base very very clever pottery uh, making really skillful stuff and uh, 6.8 million Hong Kong was the f was the final price, or as I said, around um, uh, about eight hundred thousand dollars, roughly something like that. All right, and then this this was one of the one of the sort of the main events uh, because these don't turn up very often. A, uh, a Yong Lo period Ming uh, Yu Hu Chu Pin. Um, there's a there's a, a Ping. There's a nice write up on it. It was estimated at 20 to 30 million Hong Kong, which is a pretty strong estimate. Uh, but it, it, no matter, it, it made it. It sold for 21 million Hong Kong, or roughly two and a half million dollars. But a, a beautifully done example. Uh, nice heaping and piling effect all over it. These, if you see these in, in small auctions throughout America, this they make copies of these all the time. Copies of these are extremely common. Um, you are not going to find one turning up um, in, in some auction, you know, in Ohio or in South Dakota or in southern Georgia or one of our other favorite places. Okay, this is a real one and uh, exceedingly rare and reproduced today in massive quantities. And also with yawn examples, yawn examples, which can be somewhat similar in a general appearance at times. Um, don't expect it. And uh, to give you an idea of how important this thing is, historically, uh, the write-up on this is extensive by Rosemary Scott. Here it all is. 
All right, there's a whole bunch of information on this. More details, Edward Chow collection, um, sold, at, uh, uh, sold at Christie's Hong Kong in 1995. It was part of an Asian family's collection, and then it was sold again at Christie's Hong Kong uh, about 13 years ago. It was lot 1872 in December 2009. And here it is again. So if you go back and look, and you, you may still find that 2009 auction record, it's the same vase. Don't think that these, you know, that there's several of these floating around. It's the same one. And then uh, the cover lot, of course, in the sale um, did extremely well. I don't know what the estimate is. I expect it was probably around eight to twelve million dollars um, uh, U.S. Uh, but at any rate, it ended up selling for twenty-six million Hong Kong or about three and a half million dollars. But this was a really, really fine piece of um, uh, 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 Ming, Ming uh, uh, Cloisonne, had a Jing Tai mark on the base and uh, spectacular quality. The gilded, it was still, it was a gilded bronze um, uh, b body and then, you know, the Cloisonne, ena Cloisonne enamels added to it. Beautiful coloration in the yellows and so forth. And not, you know, not a lot, you know, uh, Ming, Ming Cloisonne tends to be pitted. You see these little pits, very common on them. Um, this one isn't bad for Ming, for, for, for 15th century workmanship, but beautifully done. And it got a lot of attention before the sale. Here's the uh, Lotus uh, Lappet base uh, that the cover fitted onto beautifully done and uh, ended up selling for 26 million or uh, a little a little excuse me over three million dollars 26 million Hong Kong three three point one million something like that did very very well and uh, the last couple of things are this I wanted to mention this because uh, Peking glass is always you know, at times sort of the redheaded stepchild of the Asian art collecting world for some reason despite it being superbly well made made in the Imperial workshops um, 18th century Peking glass typically doesn't get the respect it deserves well this one did um, it was estimated at 2.8 to 3.5 million Hong Kong ended up selling for 3.2 million Hong Kong or about four hundred thousand dollars it measured uh, seven inches tall, but the, the carving of this uh, uh, piece is absolutely superb. The color of the red was outstanding. This very, very creamy, milky white uh, body that it was laid over uh, just came off perfectly uh, all the way down the piece. And of course, it was it was marking it is marking period, and uh, probably made at the at the imperial um, uh, uh, workshop. Um, here's the mark on the bottom. They're very, it's very hard to see, but it's there, right there. And these are wheel cut. And typically, um, they didn't use six character marks on the on the peaking glass. They typically use four characters. And this is how it generally appeals appears. But they do copy this mark, and they copy it with a considerable amount of fidelity. So you you, you don't want to buy something with a chin lung mark and peaking glass just because the mark looks good. You want to look at the overall workmanship, the quality of the workmanship, and understand it before uh, making that decision to buy it, because the modern copies are actually very convincing at times. And uh, anyway, this one did, did, did just fine. It was sold for 3.2 million Hong Kong, or around $400,000, which is a good strong price for Peking glass. And then the last thing was this. This was one of my little favorite things that I, I noticed it after I did the video, because it was sort of toward the end, is this beautiful um, uh, uh, Chin Lung period lacquer box just, just pasted with, with Shao characters all over it and all done in different styles. If you look at the top of it, um, all the, uh, the, the lid, for example, running in a circle around it, are all the different ways that script can be done to represent um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Shao character all the way around. And then on the outside of the piece as well, running around the outer edge and around the outer edge of the lid itself. And then the workmanship is absolutely great. And uh, if you look at how these uh, these these cloud and, and Ling Bai areas were done, um, the fungi and so forth, uh, very similar to the very very refined bronzes that were done during the period. This style was also done in bronze. And uh, the, w there was a sale recently that had a big pair of incense burners that had this sort of this sort of crisp, very tight decoration on them. And here you are seeing it again. And then around, and then they're bordered by um, uh, different uh, types of fruits and pomegranates and so forth. Um, uh, in framing framing the Shao characters, here are some melons and uh, butterflies and all that. Just a beautiful, beautiful box, about 13 inches in diameter. And uh, it was estimated 150 to $250,000 or, uh, uh, you know, that's a, that's a high estimate of, 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 of around, um, uh, uh, you know, 30,000 or so and uh, 35,000. It ended up selling for 500, more than double its high estimate, $525,000. 
um, or, or, or about 65,000, but absolutely beautiful. And it wasn't marked. This was not a mark and period box. This was just Chinlung period, but obviously imperial, obviously the best quality. And uh, uh, the, the rest of the sales did very well as, as, uh, also, um, the, but these are the highlights. So it just for right now, when, when the, the, there's still an incredibly powerful market, for important Qinlong examples, because most of the pieces we just looked at in the porcelain category were either Yongshen or Qinlong, all right? And that area still has incredible strength when, when, the, when the best pieces come on the market. And obviously there's still a, there's a, there's still a very strong growing interest in monochromes. It, it, it seems to be, it sort of lulled for a little while in, in enamel pieces, and now monochromes are, are getting an awful lot of attention. And uh, that may be also because there's an increased, I think, uh, appreciation of early monochromes, like the Sung pieces that we saw that did so well. Uh, that simple, elegant uh, forms and styles um, and with, with a shape and co one color uh, are, are so appealing. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a level of, I think, sophistication in the market. So it's all good news. It's all good news. And the rest of their sales, like I said, the, 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 their watch, their jewelry sales, everything over there just flew, just flew. So Hong Kong is still a strong market, and Christie's had an absolutely great, great, great auction. All right. That's it for this video. We'll be back later this week with the regular one, but I wanted to get this one out. And uh, have a great rest of your week. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And uh, we'll see you next time. All righty. Bye-bye.